Greetings, discrete defenders. Well, while filming tonight's test video, which is a beautiful comparison between Remington's 158 grain HTP round and Underwood's 140 grain Extreme Penetrator round, I experienced an equipment malfunction, specifically of the equipment between my ears, which you'll probably pick up on as you watch the video, but don't worry, I, uh, I corrected it before the end, so just keep watching. The other thing, I promised I would put the calipers on the HTPs. The round expanded to about 0.47 inches in diameter. 0.4715 right on that spot. Not a tremendous amount of expansion, but not terrible either. All right. With that out of the way, enjoy the video. We have a really exciting 38 Special Plus P test shoot set up today between the Underwood loaded 140 grain Extreme Penetrators and the Remington HTP. And we'll zoom in and take a look at the, uh, the design differences. The Remington is sort of a traditional 158 grain 38 special hollow point back in the day. Something you would have seen in the 70s and 80s. Something cops might have carried in their little snubbies, their little chief special or detective special, whatever. And the, uh, the, the, other, the, the Underwood loaded 140 grain bullet is a state of the art, Lehigh designed, solid copper, fluted, supposedly defensive ammunition design. So we are going to test these obviously for penetration, but first off, we're gonna test them for muzzle energy. So for that, we have the new Pro Chrono set up. And uh, let me set up a new string here or just clear this one. And start out with the HTPs. Shooting from about five feet away. 834. 827. 814. 826, 826. Round number five, 812. So pretty consistent performance from the Remington HTP 158 grain lead load. Let's uh, get a high 834, low of 812. Five shot average is 822 feet per second. That's pretty good for 158 grain 38 special bullet. Not bad. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, it's not buffalo bore or anything. We'll definitely be interested to see what kind of penetration and expansion we get with that round. But next up, we'll try the Underwood 140 grain extreme penetrators. Now, the Underwoods have a list velocity of 1,000 feet per second. I doubt if we'll get that from a short barrel, but let's see how they do. Again, shooting from five feet away. 871. 855. 891. 879. 879. And 840. Also pretty consistent. Let's look for the high was 891, the low was 840. 
The average on that string was 867 feet per second. So now we'll move on to the penetration test, to the expansion and penetration test. Obviously we won't get expansion from those solid copper bullets, but hopefully we'll get expansion from the Remingtons. Now I brought the camera back just a little bit here because the new testing protocol that I'm going to be using today will definitely result in some splash. The first barrier that we have is a four inch block of the homemade ballistic gel. I've wrapped it in 12 ounce denim, two layers in front, two layers in back. Then I've got my traditional lacquered panel, one layer, and then backed up by water jugs. At the very end, we have uh, a one by six board in case we over penetrate all the water jugs and one last water jug number six back there just holding it all in place. All right, so once again, we'll start with the Remingtons. Start out with the HTPs. Shooting again from about five feet away. Holy, holy buckets. All right, obviously quite a bit of splash. Penetrated, penetrated the gel, no problem. Don't see any real signs of expansion. Let's check that lacquered panel. Ah, actually, that might, uh, that might represent, uh, that, that hole definitely looks a little bigger. Yeah, especially out the back. That hole is definitely bigger than a 38 special bullet. So there's probably some expansion with that 158 grain HTP. Let's, uh, let's go looking for it. All right, first, ju first jug, pretty much wrecked. Second jug, hole all the way through. Third jug. Entry wound here, exit wound here, fourth jug. I'm getting a little bit, the bullet's drifting a little high. It's definitely entered the jug and it has not departed the jug. In fact, I can see it down there at the bottom. All right, let's pull that out. So this is the fourth water jug. Remember we started out with a four inch layer of, uh, of gel. So you do the math on that penetration, a lot of people, there's, there's some debate in the shooting industry how much water equates to, um, to how much ballistic gel, but definitely if we're going through four inches of ballistic gel to begin with, and then a layer of lacquered panel, and then four water jugs, we definitely have adequate penetration for defensive purposes. Now. Let's take a look at that bullet. There has definitely been some expansion. It's not huge, it's not magnificent, but it is definitely expanded. And I did forget to bring the calipers today, but I will list in the description the, uh, the dimensions All right, next I'll set up for the Underwood Extreme Penetrators. And of course, we'll be uh, shooting these Underwood loaded solid copper, fluted, non-expanding Extreme Penetrators. All right, my aim appears true. Wow. <laughs> yeah, good shot placement at the beginning. First jug is totally wrecked. Much more violent reaction than with the uh, XTP, or yeah, with the Remington, with the XTP, HTP, with the Remington HTP. Second jug is already just about completely emptied. 
third jug. Ah, no. It's blown out a little too far to the left. It struck the fourth jug, making a hole, but it looks to have glanced off, which is terrible news. I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take all my remaining water jugs that are serviceable, and, uh, and try to capture one of those extreme penetrator rounds, just so we can see what it looks like. It probably looks very similar coming in as going out, is my guess. Well, I just experienced a major malfunction of the equipment located directly between my ears. And obviously, some of you probably caught this, I forgot to insert the layer of lacquered paneling between the gel and the first water jug. So I've loaded up one more. I'm running low on water jugs, obviously, but I've got the lacquered panel in there now. That first gel block is, uh, is, is about five inches thick this time instead of four inches. So you be the judge of whether or not there's a lot of scientific merit to this, but at least I've got a full water jug behind the lacquered paneling. All right, and this time, yes, lacquered paneling properly hauled. First jug definitely destroyed, just like without the lacquered paneling. The gel backer definitely punched right through. I shot a little to the to the right this time because I know these bullets tend to swim to the left. And actually, that's gone through the uh, the, the the third jug, really the second jug, but counting this as a jug. It's gone through the third jug below the water line, and it's entered the fourth jug below the water line. And uh, yeah, it's damaged the back. But it's captured in there. There we go. So there's your Underwood Extreme Penetrator solid copper projectile. No visible signs of bullet deformation other than Slight creases from the rifling of the bore. There is your cleaned up test of the Underwood Extreme Penetrator 140 grain copper solid, 38 special plus P. So now the testing for today is finally complete. Once again, these are the two test subjects today. The Remington loaded HTPs. 158 grains and the Underwood loaded extreme penetrators 140 grain copper solid Thanks folks. This is Dave for DDR. Have a great week